Hello everybody. So continuing our study of computer science, we are now carry on with data representation. So if you remember our previous video, we had just covered formatting and digital versus analog. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Let's talk about data representation, especially with regards to numbers and, and uh, numeric data. Okay. So what is numeric data in this in in the context of digital information? It is the set of values used in arithmetic operations. These are the real numbers, so your integers and your floating point numbers. Um, or they would also be known as rational and irrational. And they are stored in the computer using the binary number system. So this is the same whether you are. So uh, we're going to see going forward that it doesn't matter whether we are talking about numbers or whether we are talking about text. They're both stored as binary numbers. OK, but we're going to go ahead and introduce our discussion of binary at this point. So. We have already mentioned binary in our previous video when we were talking about how it's implemented in computer systems. So this is just going to be a little bit more uh, of uh, fleshing out of the subject of binary. So what is binary? It is a position uh, or a position may contain only two possible values. So we compare that with the decimal number system, which can have 10 possible values, 0 through 9. So you think about it, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 10, we have to start with 1 in a new position, what's called the order the order of units. So we put it in the tens place and then uh, reset our ones place or our integers place back at zero. OK. Um, one other thing to notice is that the expansion of the order of, of the orders of units of uh, binary systems, it occurs more rapidly than a decimal equivalent. So we have this nice chart here to see the difference. So at when the decimal uh, system and the binary system are both at zero, they're the same. But then when one is at, and you see that one is also the same. So one and one and zero, zero are the same. As soon as the decimal system goes to two, you see that we had to add one to our ones place and um, our our ones place in the binary system. Well, if you add one to one in binary, you immediately have to um, move move that value over to the left in order to show that you have had a twofold increase. OK, and you see that that's the same at, at, at three, for instance, um, we add one to the value. So you see it doesn't alter the previous um, uh, position of one. We now have two ones. And then when we get to four, we see that we add one to our binary system. Well, we add one to the first uh, the, the first place. We'll call it the twos place. And then we uh, th that immediately means that we need to set that back at zero and add one to our fours place. We'll call it fours place. There are actual positional names and we'll get into that later. But then uh, the fours place is then set at uh, it, it it is has to be reset back at zero. And so now the eights place takes up the position of one. OK, five, you see that the eights position is left unchanged, but the the twos position now um, is set back at one. You can see all the way uh, through to 1000 that that entire process holds true. All right, um, uh, we general well, one one convention to write out binary numbers is to write them out in sets of four. This is somewhat akin to um, uh, in in regular uh, decimal numbers to separate digits into groups of three. Right. So that's that's just one convention. Okay. 
Now, moving on from numbers, we we now get into text. So this is what is known as character data. And character data, it's a very simple definition. It's all the symbols that are not used in arithmetic calculations. So if you can't add the if you can't add the values, if you can't divide, subtract, perform any arithmetic, you are dealing with character data. Now, uh, don't don't be misled, especially as um, we we get into the ASCII characters here a little bit later, that you will see numerals included in the textual information, but they are for viewing purposes only. No computations will be performed with those values. In order to perform uh, uh, calculations, you would need to convert them into number data from character data. You can't do a direct uh, a direct computation on um, character data. Uh, the character data is represented uh, by two major coding standards. The first is ASCII. As you see, that's the pronunciation given to you um, in IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet. So that's ASCII, and if you remember from last week, it stands for the American uh, Scientific. Well, let's go back in the notes and see it's either scientific, uh, the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, ASCII. So you see that's about midway down on the slides. So ASCII, American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Okay, and this uh, these codes the text is stored in seven bit chunks in seven bit chunks and this provides codes for 128 symbols the reason for this is that if you take two and raise it to the power of seven you get 128 possible combinations um, ASCII uh, char characters or code is usually going to be stored in a .txt file, uh, txt file, um, and that's that's when you have finished your calculations. But it is what is being read in from files. Um, and just one quick note: you notice that little star symbol, star .txt. The star is a wild card character, meaning that any file with the dot txt extension the unique file name which we covered um, uh, in, our, in our previous video the unique file name in this particular application doesn't matter we're just looking at the extension the dot txt extension and then we look at one flavor of ascii if you will and this is the extended ascii it's a superset of ascii and uh, this was accomplished by taking uh, your seven bits uh, of information and you simply add another bit well this this has the effect of it, it's not just adding one value you've actually increased your your um you've increased the the possible number of characters that you can code by a factor of two so now you have two raised to the eighth which gives you 256 characters that you can code and usually what you will see and I'll, I'll give you a, a brief um overview of the ascii um, chart not only the simple ASCII but also um, the extended ASCII and it allows you to work with a lot of the like the the French characters um, the Greek alphabet the Latin alphabet um, some mathematical symbols logic operators things like that uh, then we get into Unicode and once again there's the IPA uh, pronunciation Unicode and Unicode uses 16 bits to store symbols. Well, you see that 2 to the 7 was 128, 2 to the 8th was 256, 2 to the 16th is 65,536 possible characters that can be coded, and that's more than enough to capture all of the various alphabets and symbols that humans use to communicate. Then 
So that's that's Unicode. And then we take a look at UTF-8, and UTF-8 is what is known as a variable length coding scheme in that it uses ASCII as a baseline approach for common characters. So this would be your uh, your simple ASCII, so seven bits of, of information. And if it doesn't have access to those other, or to, to the simple values, it will go and use the Unicode characters if needed. Now we move into those ASCII text files or those .txt files. They are not formatted for efficient human viewing. You can very easily open them up and read them. They follow, you know, the the rules of grammar and 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 what have you. But um, in order to make them a little bit more presentable, like for instance on a web page or this. PDF document that I'm presenting these notes on, then you have to use uh, formatting codes. And these are co these codes must be embedded in the file itself, which programs will interpret appropriately and display the information properly. Okay. Uh, and the resulting modified text files will take on different file extensions. So if you create a document in the Word editor, in the Microsoft Word editor, you will save it to a .docx file. And what this is, is it has simply taken in the simple text file and inserted those, uh, those formatting codes in order to present the document as you, as you requested the Word editor to do. We take a look at our Adobe Acrobat Reader. This gives us our PDFs. So yeah, this this document you can you can create PDFs using a Word document. You simply have to export it to that format, the format of the Adobe Acrobat Reader. Uh, it's it's a it's a good compromise between a textual file and an image file. Okay, so it's just a way of organizing information and once again trying to present it in as human friendly a uh, format as possible. We then take a look at our HTML markup language for web page production. And this is once again taking your information, so your text files, your images, and laying them out in such a way that they can be presented well and efficiently. Then we have ebooks. Ebooks um, will store information in a dot epub, epub, epublish uh, format. Now uh, you can add you can add these formatting codes directly to the document within the uh, the text stream. So um, in fact, very often when you take a look at an HTML file or or an EPUB uh, uh, file or a PDF file, if you were able to open up and take a look at the back end, so to speak, you would see that it was all laid out nicely uh, and nicely formatted. That is for the sake of the developer. But as far as the computer is concerned, it is simply reading one long stream. And in order to in order to differentiate uh, along that stream, that text stream, you have to use what's known as a delimiter. A delimiter is a special character that signifies the difference between the formatting characters and the plain text. So the formatting characters or like the language of pr presentation and then the plain text, okay? Commonly used delimiters include slashes and angle brackets, and we'll get we'll get into that a little bit more uh, later uh, as we get into things like HTML and and those other formatting um, uh, uh, word editors. Now, move, moving forward just a little bit, and actually in some way going back and reviewing where we were talking about digitization, right? This is where you take information that is in an analog form and you convert it into a digital form. Well, when you are taking a hard copy of textual information or or number information, there are two ways that you can uh, or 
there are two ways that you can enter this information. One of them is manual data entry, and that would be at the keyboard. The second method is to use an optical scanner. So this would be your printer scanner combinations. Even now, um, nowadays, you can just take a picture with your phone and the software in your phone is sophisticated enough that it can turn it into um, a document. Now, there will be two results when you do a scan. Uh, the first is uh, a, a graphical format, so a graphics format file. So this would be your PNG, your um, JPEG, um, even you can store something as a PDF and it is actually an image that has been stored, not, uh, not text. And the only way that you can edit these files is by an image editor. So this would be your raster graphics or, or your, um, uh, your pixel graphics, your, uh, um, like GIMP. Um, but if you want to be able to interact with the textual data of the file itself, then you have to scan the document using an OCR, OCR format. And this is optical character recognition. So this is software that is reading the scan, looking at the contrast of black and white, and it's, it has some intelligence built into it in that it can interpret the textual information and determine the correct ASCII code to apply to the characters. And then it outputs a file that can be edited by a word processor. So that could be a .txt file. It could be it could be outputting directly to a .odt file, which would be your um, LibreOffice, uh, or a .docx file. So that is your OCR for format versus your graphics format. Very good. So that is the uh, that's all we're going to cover today. So what did we what did we learn? We learned about data representation, that for both numbers and for uh, text, it's going to be our binary. Uh, we know the difference between numbers and text. Numbers are the set of values that you can use arithmetic on. Um, they are stored as binary values, and you see that binary is base 2, so um, it, it, it can only have one particular state at any given order of units, and if you add one to it, you immediately have to reset it to 0 and shift the bit over to the next order. Uh, text was all those symbols that are not used in arithmetic calculations. Uh, they are um, coded either as ASCII or Unicode or a combination of the two. And then we talked a little bit about, um, about formatting, about file formatting, and you actually have to insert those delimiters in your code in order to, uh, to separate out your formatters from your text. Then we talked a little bit about optical scans and how you want it in OCR if it's going to be in textual data that we can manipulate versus just graphical data. So at the very last segment of these nodes, you'll see this table, and this is the ASCII table. So you see how here how you have three or actually four methods of interacting with the ASCII uh, characters, you have decimal, octal, hexadecimal, and binary. And each of those codes point to the exact same ASCII value. So you see the value itself is running there down, uh, uh, down that column. And this first set, so you see uh, values uh, 0 through zero through uh, 31 are all, uh, they're, they're kind of like system, they're, they're system values. And it, what it does is it allows you to type something at the keyboard and you have your program if it knows what it is being looked for and so it can apply the correct ASCII value, okay? So you see we have, this is all our ASCII values, and this will be attached to the notes which you have access to on my GitHub repository. So 
we said that we could go uh, values, what was it? Values uh, zero through what would be 128, right? Or 127. And you see that that's our delete value. So 127 is our very last simple ASCII. And then once we hit 128, we now have our extended ASCII. So you see all of these specialized uh, forms of the alphabet. Um, and so just various things here. Then we have our like our one half, one quarter, our different arrows, our quotation marks, um, some more mathematical symbols, some Greek symbols. And that is it. So that will be attached to the end of these notes. And then also here we have some resources. As I add more to these uh, notes, I will simply add more and more of these resources. So I got the ASCII chart from sciencebuddies.com, uh, the book with that we're using and that these notes are being drawn from um, uh, is June Parsons Computer Concepts 2016. So if you want a little bit of a deeper dive or have an actual hard copy of the textbook, you can go and look up that uh, link and see if you can find yourself a coffee. Copy. A coffee too, but um, uh, a copy first and then go buy a coffee. All right. So that finishes uh, today's video on computer science. Uh, I wish you all a wonderful day and uh, I'll see you. I'll see you in the next one. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.